Today we're going to be talking about some Funko Pops and a few Funko Sodas that I think you guys should pick up before they get more expensive. Here we go. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel for another installment of Funko Pops to buy now before they potentially go up in price. Now this was a video type that we did pretty frequently here on the channel for a long time, but it does require a little bit more extensive research and with everything going on over the past couple of months with our move and transition through a couple states and moving our entire collection to our brand new house in Pennsylvania, unfortunately I just didn't have the time to put this video style together until today and I've got some really great picks for some items that I think you guys should grab for your collections before they potentially go up in price and most of these have to do with upcoming movies some upcoming TV shows and some major pop culture announcements that were made over the past couple months so let's jump into my first pick and this actually comes uh, connected to a movie that's dropping in theaters this week and that is the Beetlejuice sequel and we are actually pretty excited for the Beetlejuice sequel as Joanne and I will be dressing up as Beetlejuice and Lydia for Halloween this year so that's very exciting but if you are a Beetlejuice fan and you don't have a Beetlejuice pop for your collection, the one that I think you guys should go out and grab right now is the 2020 New York Comic Con Glow in the Dark Beetlejuice with the Handbook. Now this pop has two versions like every single con pop for the most part. There is a shared sticker and a con sticker. Now the con sticker has been creeping up in price over the last couple weeks. It's now sitting at $47, while the shared sticker is currently trending for around $36. If you don't care about the sticker, I would highly recommend you grab the $36 shared sticker version. Now, the key feature with this pop is the glow. The glow is absolutely ridiculous, and it's a really nice interpretation of Beetlejuice in pop figure form and that's also a really nice plus. Also, if you're a soda collector, they actually did come out with a Beetlejuice soda way back in 2021. There are two versions of course, there's the Common and the Chase, so if you are more geared toward collecting sodas, I would definitely go try to find the Beetlejuice soda because it is very difficult, so this could be a very nice challenge for you if you are on the hunt for this one in particular. Now, according to PPG, the sodas here are not valued at a lot, but I can tell you over the last year or so, out of all the collections that we've brought in, I don't think we've gotten the Beetlejuice soda more than once as far as the common, and we've never gotten the Chase. Now, the common is trending around $9, and the Chase is trending around $37. I would take those values, you know, with a grain of salt, you know, with pop price guide. It is a guide at the end of the day because um, I think you'd have a very difficult time finding the chase, which is him in the wedding suit for around $37. I definitely think it's possible to find the common in the $15 to $20 range right now, but with them being, um, you know, tied to a character that has a sequel movie coming out, this soda is definitely going to be a challenge to hunt down. Not impossible, but definitely a challenge for sure. Next up, let's switch gears and talk about Marvel. Now, there have been some mega Marvel announcements over the past couple months, specifically at San Diego Comic-Con. Now, it's a good time to be a Marvel fan as we recently came off of a highlight movie with Deadpool and Wolverine, arguably the best movie that we've gotten since Avengers Endgame and the closeout of Phase 3. I particularly loved Deadpool and Wolverine. I thoroughly enjoyed the movie and I really hope that we are going to be seeing more of Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds' characters moving into the future of the MCU. Now, in regards to the future of the MCU, if you guys heard, which I'm sure you did at San Diego Comic-Con there was one particular announcement that sent shockwaves throughout the entire pop culture community and that of course was the fact that Robert Downey Jr. is coming back to the MCU not to play Iron Man but he's coming back to play Victor Von Doom. Now with this announcement there was a Funko Pop that skyrocketed in value literally overnight and that was the PX Previews exclusive infamous Iron Man which is based off of a variant of Iron Iron Man, or excuse me, a variant of Doctor Doom where he combines his powers and takes over the mantle of Iron Man. I am not particularly sold on 
RDJ coming back to the MCU as Victor Von Doom. I was kind of hoping for a fresh actor to play this mega role and to see a really nice story arc of an origin story of this character from the ground up, but nonetheless, I think Disney is scrambling a little bit and they wanted to bring back one of their A-list heavy hitter actors to play this role to ensure the future of Marvel's success. Now, when it comes to the Funko Pops, when we're talking about Doctor Doom, there's actually not that many options to choose from. There's several versions of Doctor Doom that are very expensive. The original one is pretty pricey. The metallic one and the black and white one are very expensive, so those are definitely out of most collectors' budgets. However, there is one in particular that I think you guys should go out and grab because it's already started to creep up in price, and that, of course, is the Doctor Doom from the Fantastic Four pop line that they released back in 2020. Now, this one has spiked a little bit. It was trending for around $10 prior to the RDJ announcement, and now it's going for $21. But $21 is still a great price for a... Doctor Doom pop and I think this version of Doctor Doom is what we are going to most likely see coming with the MCU and everything in the next few years so that is why I think this specific version of Doctor Doom is the best one to go out and grab. Now on the flip side let's talk about the heroes that are usually opposing Doctor Doom and that of course is the Fantastic Four. We are getting the Fantastic Four movie next summer. I am so excited for this movie. Now once again I kind of have a little qualms here with the actor choice for Mr. Fantastic, aka Reed Richards. He is going to be played by none other than Pedro Pascal, who has been used for several major roles in several big franchises like DC, The Last of Us, and of course Star Wars with The Mandalorian. But once again, I think Marvel wanted to go out and you know grab an A-list actor for this major mega role of Reed Richards slash Mr. Fantastic to ensure the MCU's future success. Success. Now, when it comes to Mr. Fantastic, there's, once again, not that many versions of his pop. In fact, there's only two versions of his regular pop, then there's a Venomized version and some other weird versions, but there's really only two comic book versions of Mr. Fantastic, and both of these actually went up in price significantly back in 2022 when John Krasinski briefly appeared as a variant of Mr. Fantastic in the Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness movie. And once again... I think the Outstretched Arms Marvel Collector Core exclusive version of Mr. Fantastic is an excellent choice to go out and grab right now for your collections because I think it is the best representation of Mr. Fantastic in pop form to date. And believe it or not, it is trending for only $11. So it is extremely affordable. I think it just has that classic Marvel Funko look that I know a lot of collectors look for. I think more collectors nowadays because of the volatility of the MCU, people are trending uh, more towards getting the comic book versions of characters in pop form as compared to the MCU versions. I have no doubt that Funko will release a whole wave of MCU-based pops for Avengers Doomsday and the Fantastic Four movie, but in the meantime, I think this Marvel Collector Core pop is the one you guys should go out and grab. Now let's switch gears yet again and talk about some Disney announcements. So we had D23 right after San Diego Comic-Con and they dropped a whole slew of bombshell announcements that I am very excited for. We are getting some new movies in the next few years that I'm definitely looking forward to as a fan. I'm definitely looking forward to them as a collector because I anticipate we're gonna get some pretty cool collectibles and merchandise and things to buy based on these movies. And the first franchise that I want to talk about here is Toy Story. We're actually getting a Toy Story 5 movie, which is not a surprise. But in this case, I'm not super excited for this movie compared to some of the other announcements. I did not see Toy Story 4, even though I grew up with this uh, franchise. I love Toy Story 1 through 3, and I really think they should have ended it after 3, but I get they wanted to, the story to live on, and they had such a great universe with all these characters and such, they wanted to continue having more stories with different kids as the main characters. So from that perspective, I completely understand why there is going to be a Toy Story 5. And then, as far as what I've heard for the premise of the movie, it actually sounds like a really good idea. So I'm liking it so far, and there's two pops in particular that I think you guys should go out and grab in regards to the Toy Story Funko lineup. Now, 
The two that I'm actually going to recommend I think are ones that not a lot of people know about. And the first one that I have here is actually the Pizza Planet truck with the little tiny Buzz Lightyear from New York Comic Con 2018. Now, don't be frightened by that 2018 year, even though this pop is six years old. It is a little bit tougher to find, but it is out there if you are willing to look for it. Now, here's where it does get a little bit more challenging. So the shared sticker version of this pop goes for around $75, while Pop Price Guide does have the con sticker version of this pop at $85. I can tell you for a fact I have never seen anyone sell the con sticker version for less than 100 So I think your best bet is to go after the shared sticker version, which is actually the version that we picked up a few months ago for our personal collection. And the key reason why I think you guys should go out and grab this one is because I don't think Funko is ever going to make another Pizza Planet truck ride. It's just such a unique piece. I love the fact that it actually has a tiny little Buzz Lightyear driving the vehicle, and it's just such an iconic vehicle, not from the Toy Story franchise, but also just from Disney Disney as a whole. This truck, a little fun fact, has actually appeared in several Disney movies as a little Easter egg and nod to the Toy Story franchise. So because of that, and now we have the Toy Story 5 movie on the way, I definitely anticipate this one going up in price, and I would not be surprised if both the shared sticker and con sticker both eclipse that $100 value. Now, as far as the other pop that I'm recommending here, it is a little bit less expensive compared to the uh, Pizza Planet truck, which is great news. The Woody with RC ride is the other one that I think you guys should go out and grab. And once again, it is a pop ride, which makes it a little bit more unique. And this one is a really fun one because it actually features Woody sitting on RC. And this is the only RC pop that we've ever gotten. And it's from a key moment from the first Toy Story movie. If you guys remember way back in the early 90s when Woody was riding on RC to try to catch up to Andy and the moving truck at the end of the film. And I think this looks great out of box. This is one that we need to track down for our collection. It's currently going for $46, although it has been going up quite a bit over the last few months here in 2024. So I definitely think this is one that's going to eclipse $50 here by the end of the year and maybe even more than that by the time Toy Story 5 rolls around. Now let's talk about the Disney announcement that I was most excited for. And that of course comes with the announcement of the third Incredibles movie. The Incredibles holds a special place in my heart because this was the first superhero movie that I saw in theaters as a kid. I believe I was seven or eight years old at the time and it just ignited my love for superheroes and pop culture and is pretty much one of the main reasons why I am here today surrounded by collectibles and such because that movie just blew my mind. Now the second film in the franchise was wasn't as good in my opinion. I think the premise was good, just the execution of the movie wasn't at the same level as the first movie. So I'm really hoping and expecting that the third movie in this franchise is going to be just as good as the first one, if not better, because I really think that we are due for an Incredibles comeback. Now, when it comes to the Incredibles pops, they have released a few versions of the main characters. However, I've noticed something with some of the original pops that they released for the Incredibles that I really think you guys should pay close attention to. So the first character we're going to talk about here is Elastigirl, the mom, the main female superhero of the movie that, um, you know, The Incredibles focuses on. And the original Elastigirl pop from way back, this is going way back, 2012 on Elastigirl has actually come down in value quite a bit. At one point, she was trending for $90. However, today, if you just get the regular Disney um, Disney logo box, you can grab it for only $26, which is absolutely insane. Now, if you do want the harder to find rare Disney store logo Elastigirl, that one is trending for $75, but they're the exact same pop. And the thing that I love about the original Elastigirl in her Incredibles uniform is it just has that classic Funko look. And I really think that there's going to be fewer and fewer of these on the market over the next few years. As with this big Disney boom that I think we're on the brink on, we're going to see a lot of people try to go back and grab these original Disney pops from all the first Disney series that Funko released. So I really think this is a good one to pick up right now. 
when she's only $26. Like that is absolutely insane. Now on the flip side of Elastigirl, you can't have Elastigirl without having Mr. Incredible. And Mr. Incredible is an even weirder story when it comes to his value here. So once again, the classic Mr. Incredible is one of my favorite pops of all time. It just looks so good with the mask, the blonde hair, his just classic Funko pose. It just screams original Funko and I absolutely love it. Now, once again, we do have a pretty steep price difference between the Disney box and the Disney store logo box. In fact, it is well over $150. If you want the Disney store logo, that rare box variant version, you're gonna have to shell out $195. However, if you want the exact same pop, the exact same box with the exception of that little Disney logo, you can grab it for only $36, which I think is an absolute steal. Now, what is interesting, even though this movie isn't due to come out for a few years, Funko has already launched the pre-orders for an upcoming wave of Incredibles Pops, which do feature some cool black and white chases, and specifically another blue suit Mr. Incredible Pop. And if you guys actually want to get these Pops, they are currently up for pre-order over at Ralphie's Funhouse, and if you use code Slapshot Pops, you'll get 10% off of your order. And in fact, I just checked today, the blue suit, this is crazy right here, the blue suit common Mr. Incredible Pop, this is a first blue suit pop we've had in over 10 years by the way is currently on sale for only six dollars at Ralphie's Funhouse so I will link uh, Ralphie's down below if you do want to pick up some of these brand new Incredibles pops that are going to be coming out but don't sleep on the OG ones because I really love the way those look and I think they're a key component to any Disney collector's collection. Now for the last pop that I think you guys should go out and grab before it gets even more expensive is a brand new Funko character that was launched here in 2024, and that is none other than Franny Funko herself. Now, I love the Franny Funko Pops. They've only made a few so far, and the one that I think everybody should go out and grab right now is the first Franny that Funko ever made exclusive to C2E2 here in 2024, the Stewardess Franny. Now, this one was limited to 3,000 pieces. There's two different sticker variations, and there is a pretty steep difference right now between the shared sticker and the con sticker. I put them in quotes because they're both with that 3,000 piece limited edition piece count on the front of the stickers, so I don't think there should be that much of a difference. However, there is, and the regular shared 3,000 piece sticker version here is only trending for $60, while they have the con sticker trending at 130 so the con sticker going for over double what the shared sticker version is going for is kind of crazy, but we have seen that with a lot of con exclusive limited piece pops over the past years and such. Now, when it comes to Franny, obviously she is following up Pro to the Dog and everyone's favorite, Freddy Funko. And the reason that I think you guys should go out and grab her right now is because for a long time, Freddy Funko Pops and, you know, ultimately sodas and such, Freddy was just not as popular, not nearly as popular as he is today. When I first came into the Funko community around 2014, I really loved Freddy. I loved what he stood for. I loved all the possibilities, all the creativity, all the different designs that they could do with him. But I felt like I was in this very small group of people who saw his potential. Now, here in 2024, everybody loves Freddy. Funko really cannot make enough Freddies. They keep pumping them out in you know, pop form, soda form, wobbler form, bitty form. They literally cannot print enough Freddy because there is so much demand. And I think the same thing is going to happen down the road with Franny. I think years from now, I think right now she's underappreciated, but I think years from now, people are gonna go back when there's a Franny boom and there's gonna be all these Frannies on the market that people are gonna be scrambling to try to get for their collections. They're gonna go back and they're gonna wanna get the original C2E2 Franny stored as pop. So grabbing this one today for only $60 to me just seems like a steal and a no brainer. So if you're a Freddy fan, if you're a proto fan, if you're just a Funko fan in general, 
I would go out and grab this pop because she is beautiful. I am so excited to have a female character now in the Funko family, and um, I'm really commending Funko for giving us Franny here in 2024. I just cannot wait to see all the possibilities and all the things that they do with her moving forward. So that is my list of all the items that I think you guys should go out and grab and my reasons, of course. So let me know down in the comments section below if you agree or disagree or if there's any other pops that you think could be going up in value over the next few years due to XYZ reason. Now, because today is Monday, it is time for our weekly Monday Motivation segment. Every single week here on the channel, we like to bring you guys a small piece of Monday Motivation to help kickstart your week and get you through the toughest day of the week, which is typically Monday. Now, for today's Monday Motivation, this one kind of hits close to home with me, and I think it's going to hit close to home with a lot of people. And for today's Monday Motivation, it is Failure is okay. I think that in order for people to succeed ultimately in life, you need to fail. You need to get knocked down and you need to have those moments in life where things just don't go your way. I know I myself have experienced, I would say, an abnormal amount of failure, but ultimately that failure creates a just unparalleled drive to succeed. When things aren't handed to you when they're not given to you and you have to work twice or three or four times as hard to get something than the person next to you, when you do finally get that item or that job or uh, that promotion or that certificate or that degree or house or whatever it is, it feels so good and that success just cannot be given. It is earned. And Connecting it back to a Funko perspective, it actually ties in with something that I've been seeing throughout the community over the last few years, and a lot of people beat themselves up over this, and this has to do with buying a fake pop. And we've all done this before, where we buy something for our collection, maybe it seems like it's a really good deal, or it just seems like a great opportunity, and then you get it in hand and you realize that you've purchased something that is unauthentic. And it stings, and it hurts. And I've done it, I've seen countless other people do it, and I think it's a mistake for us to go out when that thing happens and beat ourselves up, because it is an honest mistake, you didn't mean to do it. However, that failure, in this example of buying a fake, unauthentic Funko product, it creates that drive for us to learn from our mistake, and that way, it doesn't happen again. And on top of that, here in this amazing community, a lot of people are now helping other people in spotting fakes and give, you know, passing on the knowledge to other collectors so that they don't lose their money and go through that experience and that, you know, situation of buying something that is not authentic. So, Failure at the end of the day is a necessary thing in my opinion. If everything just came to us and was handed to us and was super easy, then I feel like life would just not be at the quality that it should be. I really think that failing, failing and um, having those life lessons or those moments where we can learn is really critical to us growing as people, to us growing as you know XYZ position at a company or as a leader or as somebody in the military or somebody who's a police officer. Like all these different aspects of life really can just be, you know, so much better if you have those moments and those situations where you made a mistake but then you learn from it and you ultimately succeed in the end. So that's my Monday motivation. Let me know what you think down in the comments section below. Um, guys, thank you so much. Let me know if you enjoyed this video and want to see more of this type of content here on the channel. Make sure to smash that like button on your way out. Subscribe if you're new and as always, don't stop shooting until you score.